I'll say a few things and then I'll please tell me if you agree or disagree where you think I could be wrong. If reality, I've heard it put this way, that reality is that to which life is adapted. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like animals are essentially just adapted to that reality, right? That's what the process of natural selection is, that the organism is fit to its environment. But it seems like perhaps humans have a different relationship with reality, that we're actually, to some some extent, changing our realities, right? When we engage in these imaginary, you know, whatever, I'm, I'm an American citizen, that doesn't mean anything in objective reality. That's something we constructed, but it's a very useful fiction that changes the way we interact with one another. So is well, it is that the, the step change that humans are sort of reshaping their realities? Or maybe another way to put this is creating alternative realities that we're operating yeah. within? No, I don't I don't think it's an alternative reality. And the fact that you're an American is reality. It's a reality now that human beings have created. We've created laws we've created borders we've created a structures that don't exist if there are no humans there's no america right and and there's only an america if 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 we've created something so what human beings have the ability to do which animals do not for the you know you could argue birds make nests and stuff but at a very minimal scale we shape reality we change the world and we shape it both at the um concrete physical level we knock down mountains and build skyscrapers, right? And we, 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 we knock down trees and we farm. No animal does that, right? They just accept reality, they accept nature as it is, and they either adapt to it or they die. We, if it gets, you know, this is my whole claim about climate change. If it gets warmer, we'll adapt, right? We'll change the world. We'll right. build dikes. We'll, I don't know, suck CO2 out of the atmosphere. We'll do something. This is not, you know, this is how we survive as human beings. We change our environment. So, and and so, so some of that is in the physical world, but some of that is also the fact that we have the ability to abstract. We have the ability to create abstractions like the United States of America. It's an abstraction. It's an abstraction that represents a certain geography and a certain set of laws, but it's an abstraction. But that abstraction is tied to reality. It's related to things that are actually going on. But it's a reality that only exists because we have chosen it. We've chosen to create it. Um, and it represents something real. So it's not an alternative reality. It's taking the world as we see it and adding to it, you know, uh, uh, building on top of it. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, we talked, to, I think we talked in the past about concept formation. and. Um, is, does furniture exist? Well, yes, in a sense that you can point to a bunch of different things that are furniture, but furniture as an abstraction that represents all these things is something that we create in order to explain the world out there so we can more easily communicate, but more importantly, more easily think about the world. Right? So, um, you know, chair is a concept that represents all chairs that have ever existed, that ever will exist, no matter what their specific shape or everything. So there's differences between chairs, but we understand what chair means. And that is a tool, a cognitive, a, you know, the basis of our cognition, which no other animal has. But it's it's an abstraction that represents a concrete reality, something real in the world out there. Yeah, so the, then animals would be somewhat strictly subjected to reality but humans are in this co-evolutionary relationship right we're like we reshape reality but if reality is that to which we're adapted then we're also changing our own adaptation right we're yeah, we're, I mean, we're different beauty, now we're we're different running literacy for instance and we are not running literacy absolutely so so evolution did this amazing thing with human beings it allowed us to self-program right so so uh, that, animals, is that the key difference in the self-programming between man and animal? In in a sense, yes. I mean, I, the analogy is not perfect, but yes, uh, you know, we can change us our, ourselves because we can change our attitudes. We can change our, you know, we can get healthier. We can get strong. I can go lift weights and get stronger. I can I can decide can learn not a foreign to, language. Yeah, I can learn a foreign language. I, I can learn to climb a mountain. I can do all kinds, or I can take equipment to climb a mountain. That's the beauty of it, right? I can take oxygen to climb Everest, right? That's a way in which I've used, 
have changed reality, have created this machine to help me uh, overcome a certain part of reality. I have air conditioning if it gets warm. So it's it's we get we get to write the program, and that's what reason, in a sense, is. Reason is our ability to understand the world out there, and then to adapt at least our mental capabilities to it, and then use it to take that reality and reshape it, to take the nature and reshape nature. And look, in the in end, reality doesn't change because, you know, the atoms and the molecules are still there. We're just, we're, we, but we're changing. We have the ability to change the form from one to another. To yeah, fit yeah. Our needs. yeah, it makes, makes a lot of sense. So, I mean, again, the way I'm interpreting this, uh, and I've, I've heard it put this way before too, that thinking is like a, a simulation engine for action. You know, you can spin up, if I do this, I think A, B, and C will happen. If I do that, D, E, and F will happen. You can sort of compare and contrast different paths of action, and then you choose, yeah. right? You you rationalize or you reason, and you choose a path that you think is mo most suitable to your desired ends. Yes, um, absolutely. So I, I want to, that all makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I want to ask you about the furniture concept, though, you just said. Is that essentially... What is the difference between abstracting into furniture, for instance, right? And the concept of a chair, for instance, with just single yeah. one piece of furniture out. Isn't that the the form? Isn't that the platonic form of a chair? And then we have all these instances where we actually physically manifest that form into reality? No. So uh, there is no chair in another dimension that we're linking to. And chair didn't exist in our in our mind before we came up with it. So chair comes from looking at this and this and this and seeing the similarities, abstracting away the differences and saying, what I see here all is united under a particular concept, but it's a concept that's tied to these chairs. It's not a concept that's tied to another dimension. And then somebody can tell me, Oh, I have a means to communicate with other dimension and, and you've got your chairs all wrong. Like they would in banking, I was like, like they would in something a lot more abstract where they can where they can fool us. So Platonism is the heart of all. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit here, but but maybe not so much. At the end of the day, Platonism is the source of all um, uh, fakery, of all um, of the deception that we experience, right? Because at, Plato is the villain in human history. In, in a sense of in a sense of all the bad outcomes because what is more powerful than me saying I can communicate with another dimension where the truth is really holds what you're seeing here is not the true truth the true truth is up is somewhere else and only the philosopher can communicate with them so only a handful of people can actually communicate with the world of truth well, the rest of us are in shadows in a cave seeing shadows we don't see reality so we need to listen to the guy who communicates with the truth whether that's the Pope, whether that's um, you know uh, uh, Lenin who communicates with the with the world of the proletarian, um, whether that's Hitler who knows exactly what's good for the Aryan race, um, it, you know most m most bad ideas at the end of the day we accept because some authority has told us and has devised a whole scheme around. And that authoritarian ideal, idea that only authorities know the truth, comes directly from Plato. Um, whereas Aristotle, if you think about the difference between the two, Aristotle tells us every single individual has access to the truth. Every single one of us can see the chairs. Every single one of us can form that concept. We don't need a philosopher king. We don't need a, an authoritarian to come and tell us what it is. We can see it. We don't live in a cave. We're all out in the sunshine. We could be mistaken. We can make errors, but they're all fixable. They're fixable by means of reason. So Plato, uh, in a sense, is anti-reason. He says he's pro-reason, but his reason undermines the very foundation of what reason is because it detaches it from reality. It detaches it from our experience of reality. So it detaches the chair from the chair that's right in front of me. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, 
we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.